In order to explain how a color picture tube works, first of all let's imagine that we have a gray wall before us. On that wall we paint three circles, one red, one green, and one blue. Then we place a metal plate in front of the wall, with the hole large enough so only a complete circle can be seen through it. Now three people come and stand in front of the plate. One of them is Mr. Red, who, due to his angle of view, he can only see the red circle. Close to him is Mr. Green, and he can only see the green circle. Finally, we have Mr. Blue, who can only see the blue circle. If instead of these three people, we place some electronic guns that launch invisible particles called electrons towards the wall, and the wall, instead of paint, has special substances in each circle that give off light when hit by electrons from many of the guns. Where the red paint was, suppose we now have a substance which, when hit by electrons from many of the guns, will give off a red light. Where green paint was, suppose we now have a substance which, when hit by electrons from any of the guns, will give off a green light. Where blue paint was, suppose we now have a substance which, when hit by electrons from any of the guns, will give off blue light. The only thing that makes each gun hit the right spot and produce the desired color on the wall is its angle with respect to the other guns. That is exactly the way a color TV picture tube works. The picture tube is like a large glass bottle and the guns are located at the neck of the bottle. The bottom of the bottle is the screen where pictures appear and is covered with approximately 300,000 small circles, 100,000 circles for each color. Each tiny group is called a triad. At a certain distance from the screen there is a metal plate with 100,000 holes in it. One hole for each triad. The electrons from the guns have a negative charge and can be attracted and accelerated by positive charges. Since triads are smaller in diameter than a pin, it is very difficult to distinguish them individually with the naked eye. However, our eyes do perceive the mixture of colors that are glowing. If all three colors light up in all triads, we will see a white screen. If in all the triads only the red circles light up, we will see a red screen. If both the red and green circles light up, but not the blue ones, we will see a yellow screen. In this way, practically all colors present in nature can be recreated by using only those basic colors. Each electron gun has an electron emitting element called a cathode. The three cathodes of the three guns are connected together so that if we introduce a voltage from the Y signal at this point, it will control the three guns at the same time, thus producing white light and all shades of gray. Next to the cathode of each gun is a control grid which can control that gun individually. The grids of the three guns are connected separately to each of the color different signals. The red pointing gun grid makes the red circles of the triad glow. The green pointing gun grid makes the green triad circles grow. By the same token, the blue pointing gun grid makes the blue circles of the triads glow. By doing this we are controlling the three colors with the black and white signal thus producing a high resolution black and white picture with low resolution areas which overlay the colors to each picture zone. Since the picture tube requires high voltage, about 15,000 volts, and also some additional circuitry to ensure a reasonably precise pointing at the holes in the plate, also called a shadow mask, this portion of the color television is probably the most complex one. Other circuitry required by the picture tube include the static and dynamic convergence devices, the color purity settings, the shadow mask degaussing coil, as well as a high voltage source for accelerating and focusing the electrons. I hope this video has been interesting for you. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel. Ciao Tarin.